Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Nabijina wa habibina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammad ibn Abdillah. Alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi afdalu salati wa atamu taslim. Amma ba'd. All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. Insha'Allah ta'ala, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on Tawbah. Because the beautiful month of Ramadan that was with us, it has just slipped away from us so fast, Allahu Akbar, so fast. And all that we have got remaining is the last 10 days of this blessed month. Nevertheless, this last 10 days of the month of Ramadan are indeed extremely blessed days because in the last 10 days, comes about the beautiful night and the powerful night which is otherwise known as Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, the night of decree, a night which is better than a thousand months, which is better than 83 years and four months. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that we are supposed, along the lines of these words, that we are supposed to search for Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And in another, in another narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam further states that we are also supposed to look for it amongst the odd nights from the last 10 nights. Because there is a high probability that it will be from the odd nights from the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. So if we Look at it in that way, it will either be the 21st night, 23rd night, or the 25th night, the 27th night, or the 29th night. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, just five nights we have to devote ourselves looking for the blessed night of Laylatul Qadr. It is better than a thousand months. A thousand months. Do you even guarantee that you will live for 83 years? Allahu Akbar. But if Allah the Almighty blesses us with the opportunity of attaining that powerful night, we secure rewards, great rewards, Allahu Akbar, and we stand a chance for all our sins to be forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to attain that beautiful and blessed night. So coming back to Tawbah, what is Tawbah? A Tawbah is an Arabic term which stands for the same meaning as a ruju in the Arabic language, which means to turn back. So Tawbah is to turn away from all those things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincere repentance. Allahu Akbar. But sadly, many of us have not completely understood the true reality of Tawbah. As my beloved Shaykh, Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah is reported to have said, أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْرِفُونَ قَدْرَ التَّوْبَةِ وَلَا حَقِيقَتَهَا Allahu Akbar. Most of the people do not know or haven't completely understand, understood the true reality or the true value of Tawbah. فَضْلًا عَنِ الْقِيَامِ بِهَا عِلْمًا وَعَمَلًا وَحَالًا Let alone encompassing it completely in terms of all of its knowledge or let alone bringing it into their lives completely. Allahu Akbar. So let us try to understand Tawbah and let us try to value Tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Noble Quran and this particular ayah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, highlights to us that Tawbah is not something reserved for the sinners alone or Tawbah is not something that we have to only embrace in the month of Ramadan or in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Nay, look at this ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Ya amanu tubu. O oh, you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, tubu ila Allah, 
turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. What type of a repentance? Tawbatan nasuha, a sincere repentance. But look at who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O oh you who believe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not address the sinners, O oh you sinners, or O oh you the ones who transgress the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nay, rather, O oh you who believe, the believers, we the believers were brought in iman, we are supposed to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincere tawbah. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, this highlights that it is of utmost importance that we, the believers, we who are brought in iman, that we make tawbah part and parcel of our day-to-day -day lives. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a complete tawbah, a pure tawbah, tawbah tan nasuha is a pure and sincere tawbah, which in, entails a few conditions which have been explained or elaborated by our scholars, rahimahumullah, who state that there are six conditions to a pure tawbah, a sincere tawbah. Six conditions. Condition number one is that an individual has to feel complete remorse and regret for the sins that he committed. Condition number one, that you have to feel that guilty feeling in your heart and you have to feel at most remorse and regret for all of the sins that you committed. That is condition number one. Condition number two is that you have to completely come out of whatever sins you were in. Allahu Akbar. If you are making tawbah for a particular sin, then you have to completely come out of that sin that you are making tawbah from. Or if you're generally making tawbah, then you have to completely come out from all those sins that you were in. That is condition number two. Condition number three is that you have to have a firm determination, al-azm, a firm determination that you will not go back to the sins previously committed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins. We should have firm determination, a firm resolution that we will not go back to the sins that we previously committed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to do so. Condition number four is that if you, your mistakes or your sins are in relation to hukukul ibad, i.e. If, if it is in relation to the rights of the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say for example, you robbed from someone or say for example, you hit someone, you dishonored someone, you disrespected someone, you spoke ill about someone, you gossiped about someone, you uh, spoke bad or, or false rumors about someone. These are all in regard to hukukul ibad. In, uh, these are pertinent to the rights of the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And unless you seek forgiveness from that particular slave that you hurt or you dishonored or you disrespected, Allah the Almighty is not going to forgive your sins. Allahu Akbar. This is condition number four. If it has something to do with, with hukuk al-ibad, you have to clear your records with that particular slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you wish that Allah the Almighty forgive that particular sin of yours. Condition number five is that we have to adopt tawbah. In other words, we have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincere tawbah before ghargara. And ghargara is before malakul mouth comes in front of you and when your soul is at your throat, Allahu Akbar. You have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before that situation. Because there is a narration where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said along the lines of these words that tawbah is accepted as long as it is not in the state of ghargara. Ghargara is when malakul mouth is in front of you and your soul is at your throat. Allahu Akbar. At that point, when you cry out, Ya Allah, I turn to you in tawbah, forgive my sins, your tawbah will not be accepted. We have to make tawbah before that. Because none of us can guarantee when malakul mouth is going to come stand in front of us. So let us not waste time. Let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as soon as possible. The final condition, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is that we have to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincere tawbah before the sun rises from the west, opposing the norm where the sun rises from the east. We all know that the sun rising from the west is from the major signs of the day of Qiyamah. The sun rising from the west is from the major signs of the day of Qiyamah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, and the hadith is in Muslim, along the lines of these words, the tawbah will be accepted as long as the sun does not rise from the west, or until the sun rises from the west. 
the day the sun rises from the west, the doors of Tawbah, which are currently wide open, will be slammed shut. And afterwards, even if we were to cry tears of blood, Allahu Akbar, even if we were to try, cry tears of blood, those doors of Tawbah will never ever be open for anyone afterwards, Allahu Akbar. So these six conditions, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, the scholars, rahimahumullah, have explained and elaborated it so that it, it, it is easy upon us to fulfill or to bring in complete a complete and a pure tawbah which fulfills all of these conditions if we wish to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sincere tawbah and also if we wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should forgive all of our sins. Allahu Akbar. And my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not ever think that, you know, the sins that I have committed are so great are so huge, I don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me, or I don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ever accept my tawbah. That thought of yours, that evil thought of yours, that needs a separate tawbah, Allahu Akbar. Because the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encompassing. The mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so vast, Allah the Almighty is waiting for us to turn to Him and Allah the Almighty will indeed forgive our sins if we turn to Him in sincere tawbah. <coughs> Allahu Akbar. Let me mention a beautiful story. A story of a very righteous person. A righteous person who had a few students and these students once asked him, can you tell us of a uh, very important incident that took place in your life? Then the righteous man, he said, let me tell you all of the pivotal incident that took place in my life that completely changed the bearings of my life, Allahu Akbar. And he goes on to say, you know, now you see me as a righteous person, as your ustad and etc. But long time back, I used to be a very, very evil soul, Allahu Akbar. I would never ever hesitate to commit any sin. Any sin, I wouldn't hesitate to commit it. You name the sin and I have committed it, Allahu Akbar. I even used to have a little black book where I used to make a record of all of my sins because I used to take pride in committing sins, Allahu Akbar. I would never hesitate. I would not bat an eyelid to commit a sin. I used to be such an evil soul. One day I was walking down the street and then suddenly I see this beautiful ravishing lady across the street and this evil thought just came into my mind. You know what? I just have to have her. And I walk up to her directly and I say, I, I tell her my intentions. To which she immediately accepted. He was surprised. And he was thinking perhaps, you know what? This must be my lucky day. But then she puts forward a condition. She says, I'm ready to indulge in whatever you want me to indulge in under the condition that you pay me this sum of money. To which he states, okay, fine, that's not a problem. So they both go to a private place to indulge in, a, in that haram act, i.e. zina, adultery, fornication. And just as, you know, after he paid the money and he was about to touch that woman, she starts trembling like a leaf, Allahu Akbar. To which he asks her, why are you trembling? Why are you scared? After all, you agreed and you came wholeheartedly. So now why are you trembling when I'm about to touch you? Then she states, O oh my brother, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. She states, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I would never ever have agreed to indulge in this haram act except that I have been struck with extreme poverty. I am a widow. I have two children and there is no one to feed us. My family is going through hard times and extreme poverty and hunger is what drove me out of my house and has brought me almost to the brink of falling into this haram act. Allahu Akbar. The minute she said that, you know, something went in his mind. You know, it was as if a cord was struck in his heart and he got up. He said, I don't want to indulge in this act anymore. You keep the money that I gave you and he walks away. Allahu Akbar. He walks away. You know, the miracles or the way the plan, the way the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works is amazing. He walks away and whilst he's walking away, he thinks again. She said she's in poverty. She said she's in hunger. Let me help her out. And he goes buy some food, provisions, etc. He goes back, finds out where she lives, goes, knocks the door, leaves the food and provisions by the door and he moves. He
He moves. No one knows that he, brought the, he bought the food and kept it at the doorstep of the lady's house. Now he goes back home and he had this habit of his where he used to go and tell everything to his mother. He used to go and tell everything to his mother. So he went and told his mother about this good deed of his. His mother starts to weep. She starts to weep and then she says, Oh my dear son, I know of that little black book of yours. And many a time when I used to see that book, I used to cry so much because of the evil deeds that you have committed, because of the evil sins that you have committed, Allahu Akbar. And I see that this is the first good deed that you have committed, you have done. Please go and make record of this good deed of yours in that evil book of yours, Allahu Akbar. So he also thinks for a while and you know what, that's a good idea. And he goes to his room. He takes that book of his and he opens the pages to make a record of his good deed. Lo and behold, the pages of that book were all blank. Allahu Akbar. And only one ayah was written in the middle of the book. Allahu Akbar. Indeed, good deeds erase all bad deeds. Allahu Akbar. Inna al hasanati yudhibna al sayyat. Indeed, good deeds erase all bad deeds. He was given a new slate because he turned to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in sincere tawbah. These are from the miracles that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bestows upon the righteous slaves of His. So let us all turn to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in sincere tawbah before it's too late. Before Malakul mouth comes in front of us and before the sun rises from the west. May Allah the Almighty forgive all of our sins. May He the Almighty accept our good deeds. May He accept our tawbah. May He help us to turn to Him in tawbah before it's too late. And may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how He united us here tonight with our beloved Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhir da'wai an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakumullahu khair. Donate now. Go to www dot the daily reminder dot org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network social links